And uh, once they know that, it ceases to, um, you know, uh, to be such a fear in their life. And uh, those who are afraid of heights, maybe they were pushed off or fell off or jumped off a high cliff or something along the, that nature. And uh, once they understand it, oftentimes that fear will dissipate. Yeah. So it can be very, it can be very therapeutic if you're smart about how you go about doing it. Oh yeah. Could, could you imagine maybe the people who are fear of going in the water and going swimming? I've mm-hmm. I've known people of that maybe in a past life they drowned. So you know, deep in their mind they see the water and they're they're terrified. And it, it you know it's it's logical. I had a many many years ago. I did have a a bout with um, a reaction to um, something I was taking, and. I was losing weight like crazy. And, um, uh, you know, you just, I, I, at that point, I understood, because I was getting too thin, I understood the fear of, you know, getting too thin. And I had to work real hard to keep from getting thin. So just that one experience, which just lasted for, you know, maybe a couple months, taught me how those kind of fears can be so embedded in people. Yeah, well, I, I again, I think that's because they have been reincarnated. I think the, the thing is, you know, I've talked to like the guy who wrote the author who wrote the book, you know, the Penguin, and you know, he oh, said explain people explain the name to me. Why is it called the Penguin? Well, I, you know, it's basically because it was written about young kids, you know, past lives, and he said that the Penguin represents, you know, young people. That's that was his idea. Uh, okay. He's a writer out of the UK who lives in France. I wish I could remember his name, but I have interviewed so many people, and offhand I can't think of it. But uh, it, what got him to write that book, and he did a lot of research and a lot of cases of you know kids re- being reincarnated, was got him going. Is his son about the Titanic got him you know to go in and start researching all this stuff because he was like any parent or some kids started you know three years old start talking about they were on a titanic and and described bodies floating and all this stuff you mm. wonder what is going on mm-hmm. and uh so hopefully there's some parents listening to your show who uh might be just a little bit more tuned in and sensitive to what their little kids are saying well you know again i want to stress the internet has brought so much of this out because you know like again you know i'm i'm you know in my late 60s and you know i've had eight children if i would have understood some of this stuff like with my daughter and maybe one of my other children for the years i maybe would have you know took matters a little bit different what i did you know it, it, it's it's kind of eerie though because you know it i think things because of the paranormal is opening up more people are understanding more than they did 20 30 years ago But there's so many cases of young people, you know, remembering, you know, past lives, you know, like, you know, back in the Civil War or even before that, you know, and 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 how they died and all this stuff. And there's a lot of people living today who um, have past life memories of the Civil War. So uh, that was very traumatic to an awful lot of people who live in America today. Oh, yeah. And uh yeah, and that that's what I find interesting. So I mean, I I don't know. I I'm just wondering if if everybody was regressed. Let's say they took a hundred people and regressed every person. I wonder how many people have had past lives. Uh, I would bet everyone. Yeah, and hopefully it you know maybe it just keeps going on and recycling till you you get your life right. Um, I think we have to look at it as uh, learning steps. And I'd like to think at, at some point maybe we learn enough and evolve enough that we don't have to keep repeating this pattern. In the East, they talk about, you know, getting off the, the wheel, so to speak. Um, by the way, it's kind of interesting. In other parts of the world, uh, at least uh, 51%, according to what the most recent figure I've looked at, uh, 51% of the people in the world believe in reincarnation. In the United States, it, this uh, polls will go between 24 and 27, so essentially a quarter of the people in this country. Um, I suspect it has a lot to do with uh, the particular um, belief system um, with, a, uh, with Christianity, and a lot of people won't accept past lives because they say it's not biblical, but um, 
in some really cursory uh, searching that I did, I found um, uh, at least 50 of the old books or gospels that were written about Christianity back in the early, you know, back closer to the time of Jesus. And Constantine, um, he was the emperor of Rome, and he wanted to unite the, all of his people. And the Romans believed in the sun god. And so what he wanted to do was to kind of bring it together. This is one of the reasons you see halos around um, you know, people that are called saints, because that is like the blessing of the sun god. Um, but he, he brought in all the leaders of the bishops from uh, you know, around the world at that point uh, to decide which of these many uh, writings about Christianity would be put into the Bible. And uh, uh, they boiled it down to what we have today, but it took, uh, oh, I think it was um, 40 years or so of hot debate to decide what would be included. Um, so what's been taken out of the Bible um, is quite intriguing, and reincarnation is in some of those uh, old uh, original uh, Christian writings. And some of the, um, well, there's two saints that come to mind, one is St. Jerome and the other St. Augustine, uh, they both talked about it. Uh, St. Jerome said that uh, he talked about transmigration of souls. That was the term they used. They didn't have the term reincarnation. And he, he, this is a quote from him. He said, The doctrine of transmigration transmigra- has been secretly taught from ancient times to small numbers of people as a traditional truth which was not to be divulged. And... Um, uh, Augustine got a little bit more convoluted, but he talked about uh, 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 the the student. There's a man who was so much like Plato that he talked about he must have been reborn again. I think his name was Plotius or something very close to that. Uh, they were, I think, at least a century apart, but their outlook and their philosophy was so similar that he said they it must be the same soul reincarnated. Um, so Christians need to realize that um, uh, this really was a part of early teachings, and it was uh, taken out. Many people believe it was taken out to um, so the church could keep control over the people. If you believe in reincarnation, then you realize that what happens to you and your soul or, or your relationship with God or the Creator is up to you. The people who were in charge of the church at that time, they wanted people to have to come to them for guidance or for, you know, whatever. And it was a, a, much of it was to control people. And uh, so they were very eager to uh, take reincarnation out of the teachings. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that. You know, another thing I'm thinking about, too, is the schools. When you have a child, for example, who's like going into the first year of school, like kindergarten, or first grade, I can imagine how teachers would respond if a kid would get and said, well, I, I, I know that. From, and, and I just can see the teacher coming back and saying, no, you know, you, you got to... And shut them, down real, shut them down real quickly. Oh, yeah. And then the next thing that they do is they contact the parents, right, and say, well, your kid has this overactive imagination. So the parents end up taking the child to the doctor, and guess what they give them? They put pills into them. They put pills into them. Yeah. Yeah, to make them up basically a zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yep. th- that, that's interesting. You know, again, uh, when I had that uh, ex-detective on my show, he was talking about one of his clients, which then he had the client get a hold of me, and she ended up being on my show. She remembered after she was brought, you know, uh, into whatever the state was, she, re- she claims that she... Uh, was there in Pompeii when the uh, volcano erupted. Volcano erupt. went. Yeah, and she described a lot of stuff. It was so eerie. Uh, she just said that the ash came down, and then people were just falling and dying and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, her uh, husband was in the uh, military, and she had a chance to go there, you know, and she said she she knew if the area felt just like home. Hmm. And that was just so eerie because the way she described, you know, how the uh, volcano erupt and all how the people were panicking and all this stuff. Maybe she had an over, uh, you know, active imagination. But again, 
the, the person who did the regression with her really was convinced she was telling the truth. Yep, there's a lot of that. Uh, you know, people will have this uh, extreme emotional reaction to a place. Uh, there was a, a woman, I think at the time I met her, she was in her 80s, and she uh, visited, um, I think, the south of France where the Qatars were, and this was a, a early Christian-type group that the Roman Church uh, essentially killed off because they were teaching the same thing the Roman Church was. And when she visited that site, she just broke down and wept. Uh, because, you know, at some deep level, she could remember all the trauma from that particular place. So that's, um, I mean, that's understandable, really. I'm just wondering through the years, especially, let's go back, seriously, back before 40s, go in the 30s, 20s, and before, people who, you know, claim that they, you know, and I'm sure they always have, people remembered past things in, in their lives I wonder how many people ended up in mental institutions and all this stuff because when they were a little kid, they were saying stuff to people and people around them just, you know, couldn't digest what they were saying. I think the same thing happens to people who have had abduction experiences, which I think I think it's terrible uh, that uh, any beings can abduct and poke and prod people. I don't. I think that violates some kind of universal law as far as I'm concerned. But... Uh, some of those people have ended up in institutions too, especially in the past, because it sounds totally insane to well, you, somebody who doesn't have a broader understanding. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like Calvin Parker was on my show, and he came back on his own, and he said that he d- didn't feel like his abduction where they were carrying, that he basically felt that he was abducted. And, you know, in the same way, if anybody was abducted, there, whoever does it ends up in prison. I mean... Could you imagine how much turmoil that would create in somebody's mind for the rest oh. of their life? Oh, it would be awful. No, it's it's scary. And, uh, yeah, it would be awful. Um, we did do a story a long time ago, and it was about um, a, a man who uh, was, at, the, at least at that time, was in charge of the MUFON group down in the Titusville area, <clears throat> which is where the, the space center is. <clears throat> and... Uh, he was a nut and bolt type of uh, UFO researcher, and he began to hear more and more of these stories of people who were abducted, and he began to notice that those who were able to stop the abductions were those who had a very strong belief system in God or Jesus or you know something uh, greater than they were, and they were able through. Uh, a deep belief in the power of being protected, that they were the ones that were able to break that abduction cycle. Um, I don't know if that's um, uh, universal or not, but he had quite a few cases where uh, that's how people were able to stop abductions. I'm just wondering how many people have been abducted in past lives, and it continues on. You know, I, I sometimes I really feel like we're being like cattle. We're being experimented on. So I, oh, I, I think I think we're a big genetic uh, experimentation on this planet. Well, how about you? Why don't we just say maybe we're nothing more than a big farm? Uh, some people feel that way. But I, I just kind of wondering because I don't. How can I say this? It, it, you know, if they're following somebody from a, a childhood all the way up to an adult, it makes me wonder again. Well, maybe that's what they're doing. But how about? previous lives had they been followed through previous lives i mean you know I, the, the technology or whatever is going on is sure sure more superior than anything we have so that's another thing too because it's I have a to, wonderful question i sure don't have an answer to that one no i would really like you know somebody who's done research on that if they know that people had uh, previous lives had the same thing uh, happen to them in previous lives being abducted mm-hmm. and is it carried on to their previous and then to their current life I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, quite common that generations with the same, within the same physical family, um, there will be abductions. You know, grandparents, mother, father, child. Uh, that seems to be real common. Whether it carries over to the level you're talking about, I just don't know. I don't either. Now, when you were a child yourself, 
Did you ever have, when you like, you know, I still remember little bits and pieces when I was like four or five years old, believe it or not. And 